Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Coyules Nation. My name is Secret Agent Nixon of Coyules. I'm the founder and the director of the Coyules Industry Spy Network and the Coyules Nation. For today, I thought I would do a tutorial on how to install and optimize Linux Mint Debian Edition because I am going to have to prepare for a Debian base for Linux Mint coming soon. Reason being is because they're going to ditch Ubuntu soon, I think. For this tutorial, we are going to be doing a basic guide on not only how to install it, but also secure it properly and do gaming on it. Yep, I'm basically doing the previous Linux Mint tutorial, but for a Debian base. So that said, let's get straight into it. First things first, we are going to do a quick sudo apt update as per the usual. I'm going to add in my strong and complicated password. And then if there are any updatable packages, just do sudo apt upgrade. Nothing to update there. Yeah, because I already went ahead and installed it this morning. Anyway, next step. I have this little file here, this little test file thing. It is in my history. You want to make a test file and then you will want to do this command. I will let you pause this a little bit to actually type this out in your terminal. Once the test file is gone, you have drover rub virus. Good thing this doesn't have it. Now you may also see this little script here, this TI Harden thing. I'm going to go ahead and add the text editor. You will need a couple of different applications, specifically UFW and fail to ban. UFW and fail to ban are designed to harden your machine. You've got some rules here. You've got some kernel hardening. You've got this EOF thing to prevent IP spoofing. And then this fail to ban type of stuff. I do have the jail.local. Well, there is an actual jail.local thing, but I already went ahead and did that. So I don't think this is necessarily needed. Then listening ports, knit snap, ton LP, all that. There are also some other things you could do in order to harden your machine as well. And I will actually go to GitHub, I want to GitHub, and then I want to find HBlock. There's a reason why we're going to do HBlock. This thing right here. Now the way to do this, copy this entire command and add it in here. GitHub.com forward slash Hectrom forward slash HBlock. And then I'm going to do a quick HBlock, just like that. This will basically download some source files. These are text files that will literally be added to ETC hosts. Whereas you can see with this tutorial here, or really this demonstration, there's a systemd timer that can add the new additions as well. I tend to do this automatically. Well, for me, it automatically comes to me. There we go. That means you will not be able to connect to those domains specifically, especially with the DNS that you are using which is probably going to be your standard DNS. I'm not going to go over that today. Now, you can confirm that you have done everything correctly when you've installed LMDE. Hopefully, you've also went ahead and encrypted your home folder and the entire operating system on your drive. Hopefully, you were able to do that while doing the installation. Anyway, the next step is, of course, to go to christitus.com. I'm not gonna go over the Firefox stuff today. I have a different video that I will have the editor link in the description below. Ultimate Linux Gaming Guide. This information is old, but it is still good nonetheless. I will teach you the method used for Debian 12. First things first, you will need to enable the 32-bit libraries, which is what i386 is. Go ahead and do that. Bada bing, bada boom, you're done. Now for the NVIDIA drivers, you're going to want at least the 525 drivers. And for Debian, you want to do sudo apt install NVIDIA slash driver. But if you want to get the 535 drivers, I need to do some more research on it. But this will get you the 525 drivers. I think it may be updated to like the 535 branch or something. But that is what you're going to want there. Next, you may consider using a custom Linux kernel. These are the benchmarks for some of the kernels at the time it was tested. 
And if you want to do any kernel, I'd probably do the LTS kernel. The LTS kernel really doesn't have any difference in terms of gaming. And it's the 6.1 kernel with Rust. I think the latest version of the kernel is like 6.5 or something. I don't know. I'll do some kernel testing and let you know uh, if it actually works on my machine. Of course, it could be due to EDID error, but I don't care about that. EDID, by the way, is how your uh, monitor communicates with the GPU for Linux drivers. Specifically on the side of NVIDIA, because I do have an NVIDIA machine. There's mainline. It's a stable release of the official kernel, it seems. That's like the bleeding edge. It's not really stable, is it? Yeah, that's what I thought. Anyway, uh, if you are on AMD, you will definitely want to go into ETC environment and then RADV perf test ACO. This does actually do a lot of different uh, performance boosts for AMD. This is only what looks to be for AMD machines for Mesa. Got it. All right, now we get to WineHQ. You'll want to head to WineHQ.org. This is the best version of Wine. Go to download, and since you are on a Debian base, go ahead and go into Debian. Add the repository key. So this is the repository key. Then get the sources file for Debian 12, which is this middle one here. All you have to do is literally Hover over command, control C, go into a terminal, control shift and V. That's all you have to do. Simple as that. Now you do need control shift and V because if I did control C, that basically is an interrupt signal. And if I do control V, well, that's really nothing much. So you'll want to do control shift and V to get a command in there just fine. Then update the package information just by doing sudo apt update. That should be pretty simple to do. And then you go into the staging branch, just control C that, and then control shift and V into your terminal. Nothing special there. Now in this old article, you also will see that you have Lutris as well. Lutris.net, if you're going to download, and for Ubuntu, well, you can literally use it with the OpenSUSE build service here. For Debian 12, you'll want to run these commands here. Just copy each of the little commands line by line, then do each line, control C one line, control shift and V on the other one. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're done on that front there. So that's how you get Lutris. Uh, we will do a quick U limit dash capital H lowercase n. If it returns more than 500,000, eSync is enabled. In my case, and for me in general, it returns 1,040,576, which basically means eSync is enabled. Uh, for game mode, I think you can get game mode by just doing sudo apt install game mode. I think you can go ahead and do that. Game mode is already installed to the newest version. Wow, that quick. Dad gum. I'll take it. And then here's the usage for it and whatnot. And for the pro custom Proton, well, go ahead and actually do the Proton updater. I will do Proton up QT. Or just Proton up Qt. I call it QT for a while, so there's that for you. It is an app image. Go ahead and download that. And then after it is downloaded, I don't want the winner manager. Thank you very much. You will then want to go ahead and do sudo apt install steam installer. This will install a lot of things onto your machine, but it's mainly just drivers and other components that are required for Linux and to do gaming on Linux, especially since we do have wine and other things installed as well. But otherwise, this is literally the same thing as our mint tutorial a while back. And I'm about to do a couple different things for you as well. If you want to know how to do music production setup to set this up on Linux alongside gaming, which is what I do, I have a video linked in the description below. 
on my second channel, my personal channel, where you can go ahead and learn how to do this properly. By the way, if you are a Debian or Ubuntu user, you will be downloading the KX Studio repositories on there. Just saying. And I also use the Ubuntu backend or the backport for Ardor 7.5, which is my DAW of choice. Anyway, I'm getting everywhere. Uh, after this is done, let's actually take a quick look at what we have thus far. I'm going to go ahead and hit the super key. And there are quite a few things. There's like your standard calculator. The document viewer is going to be, I think, X reader, if I'm not mistaken. Disks, I think it's going to be gparted. And we got like quite a bit of these things. You've got like Redshift. You've got like a virtual keyboard sort of deal. An image viewer. The file manager, I think is going to be Nemo since this is cinnamon based. Graphics, you don't have much. GIMP is not installed on this machine, so I'd have to install it myself. For internet, you have Thunderbird. Get rid of it. Get rid of Thunderbird. Do not trust Mozilla with that information. Use GNOME Evolution instead. That's what I do. Transmission. If you are into torrenting and you've got a good internet connection and know how to set it up properly for VPNing, go ahead and keep this on there. Otherwise, don't do it. Over here, we've got like the start center for LibreOffice. I'll just go into LibreOffice Writer here. I do not give a rip. I'm running at this time version 7.4.7.2. Yeah, you'll definitely want to get the .deb file from the actual website. Or, better yet, actually you are going to have to get the dev because Ubuntu has a much, much, much better. Anyway, at least for 2204. So there's that. You got a calendar and a library thing. Eh, who cares about that? You have Celluloid, which is an MPV uh, front end. Hypnotics, which you can watch TV over the internet. I don't know why. And Rhythmbox, which is basically another audio player of some sort. Got your standard administration stuff, the update manager, system monitor. I don't think HTOP is installed on the system. No, I can install that real quick. I can go ahead and install HTOP. It's not bad. Let's see what we're looking at. We're using 970 megabytes for the 16 gigabytes of RAM I gave this machine. And not too much of a load on our 8 core sort of deal. I gave this 8 CPUs. This is a virtual machine, obviously, because I'm still using Mint as my host machine. I'm using Mint 21. So there is that as well. We do not need to deal with that. So I'm going to go ahead. That's not what I wanted. I'll just go inside F10. Brr. Thank you being silly yeah that's what you do with htop and anyway if you want to know how you can set up your own version of this ti hardened script that i have it'll be linked in the description below so all the things you need all the articles we've used all the things we've done that will be linked in the description below but that said i think i am out of time for today's video thank you and good night